So this is the first video of a series of videos in which I will introduce you to the Spring Framework. And this video, we will just have a look at the basic components that the Spring Framework is uh, or Spring Framework applications are based on, which are beams and how to wire them manually together. So how to connect them together. And to start with this tutorial, we are we are using um, the Spring Toolsuit, which is um, an Eclipse-based IDE for developing Spring applications. There are many um, project wizards in this application. Um, for example, uh, if you open a new project, you can see the Spring category, and there are many um, things here. I'm just the uh, Spring project for now, and then this one will load you another menu where you give in your project name. Today we make uh, some classes related to Knights, so let's um, have a project called Knights. And we use the Maven project, simple Spring Maven project, because the Maven is the build automation tool that the Spring is used by default. There is also another tool called Gradle that you can use, and that Gradle uh, must be installed as a plugin or extension in order to use it. But by default, Maven is the default. So let's create a new project. And this is uh, following the Maven project outline and the source folders will be uh, or source files will be placed to this folder and we create a new interface first called night and um, when you develop spring applications you should always think about interfaces because that makes your application more modular so for example you have an interface and then you can create alternative implementations of the interface and keep swapping them as you need Therefore, you, as long as your interface stays the same, you can just modify the implementation of your application quite conveniently. Anyway, the Knight interface is doing one thing. It's embarking on a quest. And then let's create a Knight that implements that interface. Brave Knight. And now we overwrite the method. And here we just do a system out println to see that it actually works. So we just say embarking on a quest. So this is for far just plain old Java object or POJO. And in order to make a bean out of it, we will configure it in a, con a spring configuration file. So we make another class called config. Of course, the class name can be anything you want, but we just use config so it refers to the purpose of the file. And to make it the configuration file, we use the configuration annotation, which is one of the Spring's annotations. So a lot of Spring programming is actually about writing annotations. So you will see a lot of them during these videos that I'm going to show you. So now this is a configuration file. And in order to define a bean here, we use the bean annotation. It's another annotation of the Spring Framework. And the bean annotation is defining a new bean. And to define a new bean, we can, do, uh, for example, create a, a method that returns a knight. The method name can be anything. But later on, when we try to access the bean, we can use the method name as a um, kind of identification for that bean. And this knight is simply returning a new brave knight. So this is where we actually create a new instance, but it will be mapped to an interface type. Later on, if we need to use another instance, we just replace this brave knight with another knight type. and it can be used as a bean. Okay, so now we have a bean, Brave Knight, and now uh, we create a simple standalone application that will actually get that knight and then initialize it and call the method. So let's call it the test app. It will have a main method. And now in the main method, one thing we need to do in order to make this a spring app is to load that configuration file that we just made. So this configuration file that could have more beans than one, this must be loaded into the spring container and then the spring container will manage all the beans that we define here. 
and we can get those beans from the container using that um, configuration file. So there are many ways to load the configuration file. Um, when we use an, a Java-based configuration like this, we use a certain method. When we use an XML-based configuration, we use another method. But this is a Java-based config, so we use something called annotation config application context. It's a horrible name for a class. It's a very long. Just call it context for short. The context will contain access to the container, so we can get beans through that object. Um, we just create a new annotation config application context. And this one takes the configuration file name as the parameter, or actually not the file name, but the, the class type. And now it will try to load this configuration file, and if it's successful, this object can be used to access beans. So to get the bean from the context, we simply write knight equals not not new knight or not new brave knight but context get bean now there are different overloaded versions um, one that requires uh, that uh, returns the class type um, is this one not config sorry about that we will use of course the knight type notice that i'm using the interface type interface type here there is nothing about the knight implementation so in this code, we don't even know if it's a brave knight or some other knight. We just want a knight from the configuration. So if we are going to change the configuration later, so instead of um, a brave knight, we could return another kind of knight, then we don't need to change anything else in the application, just this file. So if the knight is successfully acquired, we can call its methods, and at the end, just close the context to release the resource. It's a good habit even though the application will end after this, but um, this is a good habit to do. Um, now we can try to run the application. Test app. And you can see among all the kind of a logging printouts from the Spring Framework, we can see embarking on a quest. So we are calling the knight embark on a quest. Okay, this is the interface, but uh, if we look at the brave knight, we print this out. Okay, so that's fairly simple. Now let's see what happens when we define when we want to have more than one bean and then beans have connection to each other. So how we can define that connection manually? Um, so let's create a new interface type called quest, and the interface will this interface will have one method embark, and now. For this interface, let's also create a class called Dragon Slaying Quest. So it's a quest for dra uh, slaying a dragon. And of course, we don't implement the knight interface, but the quest interface. Okay, Dragon Slaying Quest implementing quest. And here we can write embarking on a quest to slay a big evil dragon okay now what we would want to do now is to connect this quest to the knight and we have only one knight here we have a brave knight and we can have here um, an instance variable quest Again, I'm using the interface type, not the actual dragon slaying quest, because later on we can use another quest for this knight. And I could do new dragon slaying quest here, but this again would limit this class usability, because we wouldn't be able to apply any other quest here without changing the code. So how can we assign a value to this quest without actually writing new and then some uh, constructor. Well, we can do so-called constructor-based dependency injection, which allows somebody else who is creating this object to pass um, quest object that will be saved to this instance variable. And this way, whoever is creating this object can call this constructor and passing whatever quest they want 
And this quest can be a dragon slaying quest, it can be a princess rescuing quest, or any other quest that a brave, brave knight might do. Okay, and then we just change this one too, so instead of just printing out, we call quest embark. So we're just delegating the embarkment um, to the quest. Alright, so now the question is how can we assign or how can we initialize Brave Knight so that we can pass a quest here? I guess you know the answer. We go to the configuration file where we already have this Brave Knight created, but now of course we need to add the parameter here. We need to add a quest. So how do we get the quest? It's simple, we define another bean, public, not, um, not knight, but a quest, get quest. And this will return a new dragon slaying quest. Maybe we can write get dragon quest. And now here we simply call get dragon quest. And it will be passed. We call the method, we create the dragon slaying quest, pass it to the brave knight, and there we have a knight with a dragon slaying quest. Um, and now even test application, we don't really have to modify it, we can simply run it and we should see a, a quest being embarked by the brave knight and the brave knight is um, slaying an evil dragon. Alright, so that works quite well. Then uh, I'm just going to show you one more thing, You can so you can get the bean by the knight class or you can also use the name of the method here. So for example in, uh, in the configuration we have the get knight. So we can use this one here as a name. And well it works the same way except that now the get bean is not smart enough to identify the type of this one, the string. Uh, so we need to cast it to the knight type. It should work the same, same result. So you can either choose give a string here or give the class name or even give both. So you can also have the string and then knight.class and in this case you don't need this one because it, you already defined the type here. So you can choose. There are many options you can use. There are many ways to get the bean. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to show you is that what if we have a different quests, for example, and we want to use only one of them. So let's make another quest called Princess Rescuing Quest. And this would also implement the quest interface. And just print out embarking on a quest to rescue a princess. Okay. Let's add their beautiful princess to make it more meaningful. Right, now this princess risk queen quest could also be um, defined here. So we could either replace this one with the princess risk queen quest, but if we want to use both beans in our application, we should add another bean here, which also returns um, a, a quest. And just different name and returning new uh, princess rescuing quest. All right, so now when we want to use the beans, we can either choose this one or this one. So for example, um, the get knight would return a knight. Um, and here, get dragon quest will return a dragon guest, of course. But we want to change it to a princess quest, so we can just call this method instead. And if for some reason, okay, well let's just run it first. So now we have a, a princess quest for the brave knight. So we can run it here. Now the knight is rescuing a princess without changing this code a lot. Same code, we only changed the configuration. So we can play a lot of things with the configuration. We can change the way application behaves just by editing the configuration a bit. And now, um, 
if, if for some reason we would want to get this dragon quest or the princess quest in the test app we can also do that of course so we can call a quest and again context we can get the bean so here if we write quest.class this could be a problem because now we have in the configuration file we have two methods that return the quest so spring will have a little bit hard time figuring out which one to return so if we run it it's trying to get the quest let's run it you get an exception there is no qualifying bean type blah 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 uh, expecting one bean but but found two so it's found two beans instead of one so the problem here is that it cannot distinguish between these two the easiest way to solve it is to add here this kind of a string so instead of instead of get knight we have get what was the method name so for example get princess quest this one like that and now it will be just princess quest without the um, other dragon quest now it works fine of course we, we don't use this quest here in this program just to show that how it works so that's uh, how you define beans in spring framework and how you manually wire them together the next video i will show you how we can do auto wiring so we don't need to do the configuration stuff basically this stuff we don't even need to write these beans here we can do automatic uh, auto wiring so called um, so wiring automatically so thanks for watching